Hello to all musicians and music technology enthusiasts. My name is Ramiro Gomez Massetti, and today I'll present you the second chapter on Sample Modeling Solo and Ensemble Strings video series, the new string package that Sample Modeling launched recently. In this chapter, we will see tips and advices on how to play these virtual instruments, and we will analyze in detail some of their features to make them sound as real as possible. The first thing that I wanted to remind you is that these instruments can be controlled with any MIDI device that generates a MIDI CC continuous signal. In my case, I use a breath controller by the Tech Control brand, but you can use an expression pedal, the modulation wheel, or any other device that generates a continuous MIDI CC controller. To get a virtual instrument sounding real, it is important to know at least something about the real instrument. Know its characteristics and limitations, understand how sound is generated and which articulations are most used. In the case of the strings, the basic sound is generated by a bow rubbing on a string, which the musician maneuvers using his right arm. Since the length of the bow is limited, making a series of notes or even a single long note implies a to and fro movement, or what is called a bow change. This means an acceleration and a deceleration of the bow speed. This creates sound patterns that are very different from those emitted, for example, by a wind instrument. This concept is essential for the proper mimicking of sound of any string instrument. So please keep it in mind. The fundamental controllers to play these instruments are CC11 for expression. This will allow us to play the instrument in all the dynamic range, from pianissimo to fortissimo. In the case of breath and wind controllers, the CC11 is replaced by CC2. I will show you an example of how we can play all the dynamic range. The second controller is vibrato intensity, CC number one. In this case, I assigned the byte sensor of this breath controller to CC number one. So, when I press the mouthpiece with my teeth, I activate vibrato. The third fundamental controller is pitch bend. This will allow us to modify the tone of a note. These variations in pitch are very often used by string musicians. I will show you an example. Those are the three main controllers. Expression, vibrato intensity and pitch bend. Then we have a lot of other controllers that we can use in real time. For example, in this case I am using the CC19 that controls vibrato rate, controlled by the accelerometer that this breath controller has internally. So when I tilt my head to the right, the vibrato rate will increase, and if I do it to the left, it will decrease. We also have the overtones that are controlled by CC22. In this case, I have assigned the left pedal to this controller. We can also assign, for example, the bow noise and a lot of other controllers that we can use in real time with these instruments. But the mains and fundamentals are expression, vibrato intensity, and pitch bend. These instruments have different modes, which are activated by the key switches. The key switches are keys that are outside the instrument's range. The first and default mode is solo mode, which is basically a monophonic mode 
but allowing double notes or bicords if playing two simultaneous notes separating from each other by 25 milliseconds or less. In the case that we have another mode activated, for example Pixicato, we can always go back to the default mode pressing the C1 key switch. We are going to see the difference between detached and legato nodes. When I speak about detached nodes, I am talking about separated nodes, I mean nodes that are separated from each other by a time interval. For example, these nodes have an attack, a sustain and a release. The attack by default is controlled by the interplay of note on velocity, or how strong we play the key, and the expression controller. If CC25, that is called velocity to dynamics, is set to 127, the max and default value, an expression ramp will be automatically created between the initial value that we are giving using the node on velocity to the current expression value. This ramp can have the shape of crescendo or decrescendo and imitates the natural acceleration of the bow. For example, I'm going to perform a normal sustained expression, but using a very soft note on velocity. That way you will listen this crescendo ramp between the initial soft attack value to the current expression value. There it is, the crescendo ramp. Now I'm going to perform a minimal expression, but using a slightly stronger attack with the keys. That way you will listen a decrescendo ramp. This automatic ramp will be generated if note on velocities are less than 80. If the note on velocity are higher than 80, you will hear an accent followed by a deacceleration of the bow. The higher the note on velocity, the stronger and faster the attack. After the attack phase, the dynamics are controlled only with the expression controller. The duration of the attack phase, aside velocity and expression, is also controlled by CC26, attack time, which acts as a multiplier. If set to 64, one gets the default duration, which is doubled or halved if CC26 is set to 127 or 0. I'm going to show you some examples changing the value of CC26. In this case, this keyboard doesn't have any additional physical controller. There's no slider or knob that I can use to send MIDI. So I had to build a custom interface using the Limur app that allows me to send MIDI information from the cell phone to the computer. I'm going to set CC26 to the maximum and I'm going to use a high expression in combination with a low key velocity. So you will hear a crescendo ramp and this time you will note that the duration is now the double. And now a low expression with a stronger attack. Now I'm setting CC26 to 0, and you will hear that the duration is now halved. I'm going to perform the same two examples. And the other way around. Please note that if this automatic expression ramp is not desired, 
we can simply set CC25 to 0. This way you will be controlling the attack only with the expression controller and not with the note on velocity. In the sustain phase, the dynamics are only controlled by the expression. That way we can change the dynamics after we play the note. The release time is controlled by CC27. The higher, the longer the release trigger note. For the following example, I'm going to turn the rubber off and change the value of CC27 so you can listen to the difference in release time. The default value of CC27 is 127. Now let's analyze how legato work. Legato is automatically performed by overlapping two notes. So you have to play one note before releasing the previous one. Let's use the viola in this example. There are different types of legato. Slur red legato, different notes on the same string without any bow change, is obtained by default by overlapping the new note over the previous one. The velocity of the overlapped note dictates the duration of legato portamento. So if the value of the key velocity is low, the duration will be longer, and if it is high, it will be shorter. And then, if we play the overlapped notes with less speed or force, we will obtain the portamento effect. As I said before, the duration of the transition between the notes is controlled by the speed in which we play the overlapped note. The softer we play, the longer the transition time. The CC26 also acts as a multiplier for the duration of the transition time between the legato nodes. So, for example, if we set CC26 to the maximum, you will hear an increase in the transition time duration. By default, as I said before, the duration of the transition time between nodes is controlled by note on velocity and the CC26. But in particular cases, as in wind controller mode, this transition time can be controlled with CC5. We can even choose, for example, if we go to the interface in portamento time, which percentage is controlled by the note on velocity and which percentage is controlled by CC5. For wind controller users, it is advisable to set CC5 to 100% and for keyboard users to zero and only control the transition time with the note on velocity. We can also play interrupted portamento. When we overlap another note in the middle of a portamento transition before the pitch of the previous destination note has been reached. For example, I'm going to play a portamento between C and A. And before the pitch reaches A, I'm going to play a third note. So I am playing a new note before the transition process of the previous two notes ends. Detache legato is obtained by activating the key switch D1. 
the attaché notes are automatically played with altering down bow, up bow, slightly different due to the different pressure on the string. But the attaché mode will be discussed later in detail in this presentation. Vibrato is a fundamental aspect for the expressiveness of an instrument. In the case of the strings, it corresponds to cyclical variations in tone, intensity and timbre, usually between 5 and 9 Hz. The vibrato intensity is controlled by CC1 and the vibrato rate is controlled by CC19. In this case, I have assigned the bell sensor of this breath controller to CC1 and the accelerometer that corresponds to the tilt of my head to the vibrato rate. Let me show you an example. We can also shape the vibrato using the breath controller or pitch bend, but the most recommended way is to use the CC1, since it perfectly combines the variations of tone and intensity. Another very interesting aspect concerns the vibrato delay. The real player most often slightly delays the onset of vibrato after the final pitch stabilizes. A vibrato delay and fade in is automatically generated in sample modeling strings and controlled by CC23. If we want this automatic vibrato delay, CC number one, vibrato intensity, must not be on the move, because if it is moving, the vibrato delay will be overrated. I'm going to use in this example this joystick for controlling the vibrato because keeping the CC1 still is almost impossible with the byte sensor. I will set CC1 to the maximum. The duration of the vibrato delay is controlled by CC23. For example, if we set it to the maximum, you will hear a longer vibrato delay. Remember that I am not moving the vibrato intensity, just I set it to the maximum to show you this effect. In case one wants immediate vibrato for very expressive climax notes, transiently bypassing the preset vibrato delay, this can be easily obtained by quickly moving the CC1 to a higher value. Unlike conventional libraries, which use individual samples for each articulation, sample modeling solo and ensemble strings allow to shape virtually any articulations using a few basic controllers, molding them as our liking. This way, one can concentrate on playing music and not on selecting pre-recorded articulations with key switches. I'll show you a few examples of this approach. Staccato. Pure staccato is obtained when playing very short notes, notes of less than 45 milliseconds of duration. No key switches are needed for this effect. All this happened in the solo mode. You can play normal notes, and if you play very short notes, you will hear the staccato articulation. Then we have other important articulations that we can do, such as crescendo and decrescendo, or accents, using the expression controller only. Trills are carried out by pressing a key, and then, without releasing it, pressing a nearby key repeatedly. For example, We can also do ornamentations or fast passages and you will see that the instrument's response very good.
While we can perform many articulations in solo mode, we have a series of key switches for activating other play modes. Before examining these modes, let me remind you that the key switches operate in either a momentary, if pressed at velocity below 85, or latch mode, for velocities above 85. Momentary mode means that the key switch remains active as long as you keep it pressed. In latch mode, the key switch remains active until it is pressed again, at any velocity, or if the default key switch is pressed. To activate the latch mode, you have to press the key with a velocity above 85. A panic complete reset is obtained by simultaneously pressing three or more key switches. The first key switch, C, activates the default solo mode. Then we have C sharp that activates poly mode. In this mode, multiple notes can be played simultaneously or in a sequence. This mode does not yield legato on overlapping notes. This feature is not available. But this mode allows realistic arpeggios or broken chords. Then we have the key switch D that activates the detaché mode. In this mode, the note that you're playing will remain active, and if you play this note again, a bow change will be introduced. And if you play another note, a detaché legato will occur. This is a type of transition that implies a bow change. This mode can be activated also with the sustain pedal, and the duration of transition will be controlled by key velocity and CC26. The sharp key switch applies an expressive crescendo on each new legato note. You can achieve this by using only dynamics also. The purpose of this key switch is to facilitate the task for the lazy ones. E. Tremolo. An automatic tremolo is produced when pressing this key switch. CC11 controls the dynamics and CC19 controls the tremolo rate. F pizzicato, dynamics are controlled by velocity and CC27 controls the duration of the decay. F sharp activates color legno mode. G activates harmonics. Vibrato and portamento, albeit very difficult to play with the real instrument, are also allowed as a bonus for special effects. G sharp allows open strings. Per default, open strings are not used, except for the lower strings. This corresponds to the behavior of the real musician, who generally tends to avoid open strings, since they may have a different timbre and resonate longer. If needed, open strings are made automatically available by this key switch. playing positions on the fingerboard. By default, these instruments use samples recorded in low position. 
If one wants to use samples recorded in high or highest positions, only available in the violin, this can be obtained by pressing dedicated key switches. The A key switch resets to the default low positions, A-sharp activates high positions, and only in the violin, the C key switch of the second octave uses highest positions anywhere possible. Since a few years ago, I am developing a technique to achieve realistic results with this kind of instruments. This is a work in progress, requires a lot of practice and of course I am open to suggestions. These are a few tips that I want to share with you. The first tip is about mimicking the to and fro motion of the bow. As said, since the length of the bow is limited, the real player is compelled to reverse the direction of the bow even when playing a single long note. This implies that the bow speed goes down to zero, then progressively increases and when approaching the end of the bow decreases again down to zero. This to and fro motion can be mimicking by acting on the expression CC, shaping it in such a way to reassemble the half cycle of a sine wave. Starting from the bottom, bow speed 0, to the top, maximum bow speed, and then go back again to 0. This technique to be performed in real time requires a lot of experience and involves a learning curve. One must be aware that, for example, blowing in a breath controller in the way usually employed for wind or brass instruments may yield unrealistic results with virtual strings. This is very important to keep in mind. As said, a consequence of the limited length of the bow is the necessity to introduce a bow change after a certain note duration, time which becomes progressively shorter at higher dynamics because higher dynamics means higher bow speeds, and with higher bow speeds we have less time to complete the bow movement. The bow change requires using the key switch D that activates the detaché mode. As you can see, when I do higher dynamics, I try to introduce more bow changes. The limited length of the bow also affects legato notes. When we play various legato notes in a row in a real instrument, this note shares the same bow movement. So when this movement ends, the musician must introduce a bow change. If we play too many legato notes in a row in the virtual instrument, we will be performing something that the real instruments cannot reproduce, we are losing realism. We have to imagine the bow movement in every phrase, something like dividing the phrase in blocks. The higher the dynamics, the less legato note we can play in a row. I'm going to perform a long phrase. First, I will do it only with legato notes. In other words, what you don't want to do. And now I am going to introduce bow changes. If several legatos are to be played in a phrase, 
it is wise to use both Slarod legato default alternated to detaché legato with bow change. In this case, I'm going to activate detaché with the sustain pedal. Another relevant aspect to keep in mind is that it's not too common in string instruments to introduce very rapid changes between very quiet and very loud dynamics on the same note. This is because the bow and the arm have certain inertia, and the speed of the bow cannot rise to the maximum in milliseconds. For example, we have to avoid these kind of things. Quite important is the proper use of pitch bend. String instruments are characterized by quite wide pitch changes and slides. These pitch changes can be reproduced using the pitch bend, which may greatly contribute to realism. Pitch bends are most useful at the beginning of the note, mimicking the behavior of the real player approaching the desired pitch by rapidly adjusting the finger position. Another control that you can use to get more realistic results is overtones. This allows to imitate the typical out of helmet sounds produced by a transit mismatch between bow pressure and bow speed. This sound can be occasionally heard during the performances of even excellent string players. It often appears at the beginning of the note and can be imitated by a very short burst of CC22. In this case, I am using the left pedal. My final advice for this chapter is that playing these virtual instruments require a lot of concentration and there are many things to keep in your mind while performing, which become more and more natural with some experience. But if you don't feel confident in controlling many variables at the same time, you can always record the basic controls and then in post-production add details, such as overtones, pitch bend, bow changes, detaché, etc taking into consideration all the advices that I already give you. Well, this is all for now. The next video will be a dedicated episode for the ensembles, so stay tuned and subscribe to my channel, clicking on the bell icon to get all the notifications. You can visit Sample Modeling webpage at samplemodeling.com to get more info about these awesome instruments. If you want to know more about my music and my activities, please visit my website ramiregomez.com.ar. If you liked this video, please give me a like, comment and share. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching and I see you in the next one.